applications of your tension members. So the first application of your tension members is it is used as a members of truss elements that is roofs, bridges and towers. So, so what is the truss element? As I told you, it's an example for your truss. Or this is also an example for your truss member. So what is second application? It is used as a bracing members in the buildings. For example, in your long span structures, it is used as a bracing elements. So it is used as a suspend suspenders in suspension bridges. For example, if you are having a bridge like this, So these are called as suspenders. So it is used as a suspenders in suspension bridges. It is used as a cables in bridges. So these are called as cables. So what are the applications of your tension members? It is used as a members of truss elements. These truss elements are used, like, used in roofs, bridges and towers. <coughs> towers means your cell phone towers, uh, everything. <coughs> it is used as a bracing members in bridges. It is used as a suspenders in suspension bridges. It is used as a cables in bridges. So these are some of the applications of your tension members. So different forms of tension members. That first one is rod. So it is in circling section. So this is an example for your rod. Flat. So for flat, this is an example for your flat section. And the next one is angle section. So for angle, the complete view of this angle section will be in this way. So double angle section, here itself I'm drawing how it looks incompletely. T section Channel section, very important section, channel section. And your last section is tube section. So the different uh, forms of tension members are rod, flat, angle, double angle, T section, channel section, and tube section. So these are the different forms of your tension members. So another important topic in your design of tension members that is gross section, net area section and net effective area section. So what the first one is gross area section. So what is gross area section? The total area of a member without deducting of area of holes is called as gross area section. For example, this is a structural member. So for this, this complete area of the section without deduction of any holes. Holes, uh, for what we uh, usually deduct holes? For, in order to join to uh, uh, structural members by using your bolts. So without deducting any holes, so the gross area of a section is defined as the total area of a member without deducting of the area of the holes. So the gross area is equal to L into T, simply length into thickness of the section. And the ne next one is net area section. So what is net area section? The area of a cross section after deduction of area of holes from the section. Means in order to obtain net effective area, in order to join any two structural elements, we need definitely we need to detect the holes. So these are the holes. So from this cross area section, if you minus or detect the area of holes, that for example, here we are going to detect 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 holes. So 6 into area of the circle. So what is area of the circle? Simply pi by 4 d square. So the net area section means the area of 
gross section after deduction of area of holes from the section. The formula is gross area means L into T minus N into pi by, pi by 4 d square. N here N refers to number of holes. N refers to number of holes. The last one is net effective area. The equivalent area of an imaginary axially loaded members of equally load carrying capacity. For example, when an angular section is connected to a plate by using a bolt, see, this is an extra surface that we are uh, projection towards outside. So the net effective area lies here, from here, from where the bolt is jointed to here. So this complete area is called as net effective area. So the important concept in your design of tension members is gross section area, that complete area, net area section means a reduction of area, gross area minus area of uh, your <coughs> holes and net effective area, a, area where the imaginary actually loaded is carrying capacity, load carrying capacity. So these are the very important concept in your design of your tension members. Okay, now let us differentiate the strength of tension members when they are subjected to uh, fillet wells and when they are connected to riveted joints. So for riveted joints and fillet wells, I have already uh, given some brief discussion, I mean description in our first chapter, that is chapter 1. So the strength of tension members when connected to a fillet well versus when the strength uh, of tension members connected to a rivet joint. So what happens, let us have a look at it. <coughs> So the strength of tension members is more in fillet wells, whereas the strength of tension members is very less when they are connected to a riveted joint. So here TM means tension members, sure. No detection of holes from the section. So in order to connect any two members in fillet well, directly we does the welding, there is no need of any detection of holes. Whereas in your riveted joints, detection of holes from the section. So in order to join two sections together by using riveted or bolted joints. We need to detect the holes from the two, both the plates and again we have to detect, place the bolts or rivets. So there we need to detect holes compulsory. Without detection of holes, we can't place any rivet or bolted joint connections. So no strength of the plate is reduced in the case of fillet wells. So the reduction of area, the strength of the section is reduced as we detect the holes, the strength of the tension members when they are connected to rivet joints are reduced. So here the strength is more, there the strength is very less in the case of riveted joints and fillet wells.